it's Friday the 15th of April, I am not digging up the road. <laughs> I am digging between the onions because I'm going to do some, there must be a technical term for it but it eludes me, I'm going to do some planting next to those with something different. If you know what that, <laughs> that word is, stick it in the comments and I'll go, oh yeah, it's that. So these are the onions and they're doing brilliantly. I think it's, it's been very wet this week. Um, I think it's more rain tonight. So that's why I've come here on uh, Friday evening. I think rain tomorrow, probably sun on Sunday. So I'm gonna put coriander in and I do not like coriander, but Jake does. So I'm putting this in just for him. Uh, I hope also it's gonna keep some of the weeds down. So what I've done is I've made a drill between the rows here should just about fit and we're going to put some coriander in while we're here take a look at the garlic the elephant garlic is doing really well sprouting up big and strong look at the size of that so i'm really pleased with that in fact all the onions are looking good they've all come up in rows looking very neat even the leeks these are last year's leeks have got a, a burst of growth on them so that's all very good <sighs> i'm finding a little hazel seedlings coming up. This from last year. So let's put some coriander in. And there's the coriander seed. It looks like little beach balls. So these are going to go, oh, it's already gone. One centimeter deep and about four centimeters apart. Oops, turn there. Oh no, it's all coming out now. <laughs> it's... I think I should have had less in my hand. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll put those into proper lines. And then as they grow, uh, I've got to thin them out. Now, according to the seed packet, it doesn't tell, they don't take well to putting into pots and then thinning out later and, and planting out later. So they're going straight in the ground. Not in zigzags though. They'll be straight lines, I'm sure. Well, that's all the coriander in. I don't think I'll need to water it in. I heard a rumble of thunder. Well, let's go and see what else we've got to do before the rain comes and the sun sets. Well, they're true to their word. Look at these giant sunflowers in just a week. They've gone from this, which is a little bit chomped, to that, just a week. That's pretty amazing. The beans too, the broad beans, they've started coming up. Um, these sunflowers I repotted midweek. That's a size difference in just a couple of days. Now you might remember I was doing an experiment with the peas. So we had Ambassador and Hurst Green Shaft outdoors and in the little greenhouse. There's nothing, nothing happening out here. And I kind of wouldn't expect much to be happening because it's been pretty miserable. However, <laughs> there are signs of life. The ones from the little greenhouse. So these are the Hurst ones. Look at that. Whoop. Focus your little thing. There we go. Little shoots have just come up in the last day or two. Nothing from the ambassadors yet having a lie in, but the Hursts all seem to be coming up. That's great news. I just hope it's going to get warmer and the rest can pop up. Speaking of seedlings, this is the Romanesco broccoli, which has got its first little true leaf coming out. So if you remember, this was the one that was all wimpy and, and keeled over when I transplanted it. But that's doing really well, nice and healthy. I'll pop you back in there. What else is going on in here? Whoops. Knocking one over. You didn't see that, did you? It's off camera. <laughs> Cauliflowers are coming up. Uh, everything else seems a bit sleepy. The catnip, we have little bits of catnip. So I'm hoping Tripod Cat isn't going to come in here and just rampage. We'll see, we'll have to put those outside. What else is going on? Nothing down the bottom. But these are looking quite good, aren't they? All the broccolis. To figure out what's been chomping on the sunflowers though, I can't see any slugs about. Definitely something there. That's great. All going on here. I think you can see from there already. Little San Mazzano tomato sprouted. Well, you're in the foreground now, focus on your tomato. There we go. <laughs> One of those. 
two, just two. But two is a good start. We've got more seeds we could put in. And I think this reflector has helped because it's fairly upright. You see that's fairly upright? So it's not craning its neck for the sun. So this foil reflector has worked really well. And I've put one in the greenhouse as well. Now the next job is salads. I've not had a great deal of joy with salads. I've got some stuff I've used last year and they're still good till 2018 these seeds so I've got a mixture of sort of Italian um, oriental I've got some spinach to stick in um, and I've got labels over there and new for me I can't remember where I put it here polytunnel time now the reason I've got this is not just to heat the soil up and things like that but let's protect it from pigeons because we have a terrible problem with pigeons here. They'll just tear everything up. They did with the broccoli, they did with um, what else do I have in cabbage? They destroyed that. So hopefully, slightly pigeon proof. Haven't had the badgers in yet, but we'll have the pigeons to contend with. And in terms of sighting this, I'm wondering because it grows reasonably quickly, I'm going to do an experiment. If it doesn't work, I can move it. I was thinking of doing it on the hugel culture bed because it doesn't need particularly deep roots and that's still got leaves and twigs underneath there. So we'll see how we go with that. Yeah. So this is the area that's going to be for the lettuces and things. Now I know it's pretty good because we have the watercress growing on the side here in the shade. Now because I've taken that tree out and most of that bush, it's going to be a bit warmer, a bit sunnier. And the ground has had manure dug into it, but it's uh, a little tough with all the rain we've had. So I've hoed it down, and I've raked it, and then I've sort of spike raked it, just to make it a bit more fluffy. And I'll put my poly tunnel out, just by the side, so I can figure out how long space I need to work on, so I don't do too much or too little. And I think that's just about right. So I'll make some drills and put the seeds in three lines, I think. I think we might get hmm, maybe two lines looking at that. We'll see how we go. Uh, I don't know if that's a potato or weed from last year. Well, you can tell by my stiff. It's getting a bit chilly now and the light is fading. So we'll get this done and then I can go home. So there are the drills for the salad and I've put two rows in there. And pretty much on cue the rain started coming down. So there's a couple things left to do. I'm going to cover the salad seeds with some soil, wait for a bit of rain to soak in, help them, give them a helping hand, and then I'm going to put spinach at the ends of the polytunnels. There's a lot of guard plant. I don't want anything going in there and munching on the nice salad leaves. Spinach is so-so, so I'm going to sprinkle it around the entrance and if we get a little barrier of spinach going while these are growing up, there's going to be a bit of a sacrifice. And if, you know, if the bugs don't eat them, then, you know, we've got spinach. So that's a good thing. All right, let's cover these up. One last, last thing, I almost forgot. Look at these daffodils. So these are looking great, but I promised them to uh, our neighbor and my good friend Pete, because he's from Wales and he likes the daffodils. So I'm just gonna take those in, uh, and take them home and look at, oh, look at this primrose down here. It's rather nice, have to be careful not to tread on that when I cut these flowers. But for the first year in, they're looking pretty good. It's Saturday. It's a nice sunny day. Don't need to rush today. I've had a letter. It's not a fan letter. It's from the council. <laughs> now, of course, because this is public land, it's rented land. There are all sorts of rules and regulations. But you know, I've come up with some weird ones. So apparently, my little peg here, that says what my plot number is, isn't clear enough. So I had to go and buy numbers screw to this post up here so that they can see them. The other one is a bit more weird. Um, it says, I have to remove the non-fruiting tree, bracket S trees, holly from your plot. Uh, I've got two hollies on my plot. I've got this one, and I've got this one. Uh, then I've got these trees, and then I've got that tree, and I've got those trees. And then all these trees, and they just said remove the holly. Now last year, this was all trees and bushes, so it's a bit of um, a bit of bureaucracy to contend with with this morning. 
I'll be sad to see that holly go. Not so sad to see that one go. I was going to get rid of that. There's a couple of extra jobs today. What else? What else? What else? What else? Well, with the success of the onions and the leeks down here, I'm going to put some Chinese spring onions in. They didn't work last year, but if the ground seems to be working for these, then I think it should be working for the spring onions. Ah, the polytunnel is still up. That's good. That's good to see. So first off, let's get a screwdriver. Let's get my numbers up before the council come back. And they do in four weeks to check up on me. <laughs> Craziness. Well, that's the holly tree gone from here. I've, I've sort of kept the stump because yeah, down here, I think it's quite nice in amongst the bluebells. I just hope they're going to do all right without all that cover. Seems a lot more open. The bush is gone as well. Kind of sad. That one had to go. This one, yeah, I'm not so sure. Uh, spring onions and Chinese spring onions. These are from China. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know why there's a horse on the back. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I've had to have these translated. So apparently, uh, full sun or light shade, well drained, six inches apart, group in three to four. Pinch out flowers can grow in pots. So what I'm gonna do, as the leeks seem to be growing quite well this year and the onions and the garlic, I've just made some drills down here I'm going to sprinkle them in and, and see how we go. It seems to be sunlight shade, so that should be all right. It also says, this seed is intended for planting by professional growers who are familiar with this variety or, or who harvested under their field conditions. But then it also says, guarantee satisfaction. So I'm, hope, I'm hoping for more satisfaction than actually being a professional with these. Here, the seed itself is not much different from any other onion seed, really. One last job to do today. This was a good discovery last year. I had an apple tree growing. It produced about three apples. It's gonna start getting a bit wiry. I think the bud is just starting to break, so now's a good time to prune it back. So I'm gonna take out some of the, the old growth. We get the side shoots, make sure nothing's crossing. General haircut. <laughs> I'm trying to grow mine, but this one needs a bit of a, a cut back to make it tidier for this year. Kind of a drastic prune for this one. It was all misshapen. Uh, I don't care so much if it does apples this year. I just hope it's going to form a nice shape. So I'm trying to get some, you can't see because it's bending over arms off this way and this way and this way. And then maybe we're going to be able to stake that. We'll see how this one goes. I hope it's going to be all right because the apples are, are kind of nice. Let's try and think what else we've got to prune. I've already done the pear trees last year. I think that's it for now. So let's get this uh, over there to rot down, and I think it's time for tea. <laughs>